What can the power of a dream inspire us to create? In this visit to the National Museum of Wildlife Art, we explore how a resilient granite carving on the museum's sculpture trail expresses deeply felt history and hope for a better future. This feels rough, this feels smooth. When you look at these, describe what shapes you see. I see a circle. Why do you think the artist put a circle in this bison? So you can see through. So you can see through. And what are you looking at when you look through the bison? A lot of stuff. When I look through this hole, I see a river and a mountain and a refuge. So if this is just a regular bison, what is this guy right here? A baby bison. A baby bison? So this is called Buffalo Mountain, and this is called Little Buffalo Mountain. When I see a bison in the wild, I think it's big. When you saw a bison in the wild, were they really close to you? Yeah. Uh, probably about like right next to the fence. How many were there? Probably 10 or 15. When I saw a buffalo in the wild, I thought it was cool. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. Whether you call them buffalo or bison, it's undeniable that these animals' lives are closely intertwined with our own. Bison that live in Kelly, Wyoming, just a short drive from the museum, are part of the Grand Teton National Park herd of 567 individuals. Less than a three hour drive from Kelly is Yellowstone National Park, the only place in the lower 48 where a native population of bison have freely roamed since prehistory. Before Europeans arrived in North America, over 30 million bison blanketed vast landscapes from the Eastern Appalachians to the Western Rockies. It must have been a sublime sight, these majestic and powerful animals stretching as far as the eye could see, supporting ecosystem health in the wake of their ancient migrations. By the late 1800s, that awe-inspiring vision of bison millions would never be seen again. At that time, less than 500 bison remained after federally sponsored extermination campaigns, hide hunting and sport hunting nearly rid the world of bison subjugating Native American groups and opening the Great Plains to the railroad. Although the great herds no longer roam the earth, they remain in the hearts and stories of many First Nation peoples, some of whom manage their own tribal herds. Stuart Steinauer's sculptures, Buffalo Mountain and Little Buffalo Mountain, honor the importance of the buffalo to the Plains Cree, one of the largest First Nation groups in North America. Art and memory like the Buffalo and Plains Cree, are closely connected. Stuart Steinauer, who carved the Buffalo Mountain sculptures in 2015, is of Plurry National Heritage. His family tree includes Scottish, Irish, Cree, Anishinaabe, and Mohawk ancestors. He grew up on the Saddle Lake Cree Indian Reserve in Alberta, Canada. Steinauer is a self-taught sculptor, but rejects the title of artist, preferring the term stone carver, he doesn't claim to have individual artistic talent, instead crediting his abilities to a mysterious creative force that comes from a spiritual being called Rock Grandfather. Stewart believes that Rock Grandfather guides his hand as a carver. The sculpture Buffalo Mountain refers to a Cree story and to a profound experience Stewart had as a young man on the Saddle Lake Reserve. Listen to how he describes it. I'm, I'm Stuart Steinhauer. I'm from a place called Honichek Skopanik. It means a place where a shadow was seen on the lake ice. I'm a granite carver. I work with a Cree cultural, spiritual force that we call the Rock Grandfather. And that's why I work with granite. And the story is about uh, a time when the last of the great buffalo herds were disappearing. They weren't disappearing, they were being destroyed. And according to this Cree story, 
when the rock grandfather saw that the great herds were going to be destroyed, he opened up a hole in the mountains and he brought the last of the herds through that hole and put them into a safe place. It's like an alternate reality, an alternate dimension. They're safe there, waiting for a time of return. And I, I was out and about in the world and lived in many other places, and I met many people. And I met someone, a Cherokee guy, but he was one of the first people to introduce me in, in a real way to the fact that there is an, a body of knowledge, indigenous knowledge, and it's an important and profound body of knowledge. And so we became friends. At one point, he, he came with me to visit my own reserve. And when we got there, my friend, from Cher my Cherokee friend, immediately began relating a dream he'd just had. And in the dream, he and I were hiking in mountainous terrain. And we came upon uh, an opening, a cave. It looked like a cave, and, and yet when we looked in, we thought we could see light in the, in the far back distance. And so. We went through. The two of us, he said, went through this cave and it turned out to be a tunnel. And we came out the other side onto another mountain hillside. But this time we were looking down over a broad, vast plain covered in herds of buffalo. And here and there we could see in the distance, we could see teepee villages. No sign of modernity. Suddenly people were surrounding us and these people obviously weren't from our own time and space. They were indigenous people and they said, well, how did you get here? And my friend, Cherokee friend explained, we found this, found this tunnel, we, we just walked in here. And these people were amazed. They said, well, that's, 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 it's impossible. Well, you can't come here from where you are. And that ended the dream. My Uncle Mike said, well, it, it sounds like you two, in the dream, you two found the passageway through the mountain that the rock grandfather opened up and you had a chance to go through and see where the buffalo, the last of the buffalo herds are waiting. My Uncle Mike went on to, to explain that he'd been told this story by his elders and they'd told that story handed down over generations. and. It had a profound influence on me. I decided I wanted to make a carving about it. And, and that's where the Buffalo Mountain series began. The hole that you see cut through the center of those granite buffalo represents that tunnel that's going from one dimension to another dimension and where the great herds are safe and waiting for a time of return. And so the story itself ends on a hopeful note that there will be a time of return. And I too feel hopeful. I guess I've seen a lot of stuff go by and there's been fluctuations, but it seems to me the fluctuations are always leading towards a more positive place. In 2016, the National Bison Legacy Act was passed establishing the bison as the first national mammal of the United States of America, a fitting tribute to the native cultures that have thrived on this continent for millennia. Today, there are about 360,000 bison, about 1% of the original population, in herds on private, federal, state, and tribal lands. More than 60 tribes are involved in bison restoration on Native American land. The hope is to grow and connect these herds to restore millions of bison to the plains and forests they once roamed. Steinauer's sculpture speaks to both deeply felt loss and to enduring hope for a better future.